G'day everyone, today we're talking about the Pope's plan for the Crusades. Pope Gregory VII was an interesting uh, character. Um, seems to, we'll, we'll talk about him separately, but he really conceived a, a large armed pilgrimage of Norman knights that would essentially retake the Holy Land and he would lead it himself as Pope. Um, he never obviously got to, to fulfill that uh, sort of dream, and but I undoubtedly um, he influenced Pope Urban II and let's take a bit of a a look at Pope Urban II's plan <laughs> right okay so Pope Urban II's plan Pope Urban II realized I guess that he was no tactician he was no military strategist and he required uh, professionals to address this this issue to give you a context, there have been 450 years of, of Muslim aggression and many Christian lands had fallen to these, these Muslim forces. 450 years is a long time and, and Europe um, didn't have the ability to unite itself um, under a single banner to, to go and repel these invasions. Europe at the time, obviously, if you think back to um, what we're talking about here is 7th, 8th, 9th, 10th and 11th centuries. Well, uh, what are we talking about in Europe at that time? We're talking about the so-called Viking Age. Um, the massive Viking invasions of England, the Viking raids on Paris and Italy, uh, all of that kind of thing. So Europe was pretty well um, busy with other stuff at that time uh, and, and didn't have the resources or I suppose the political will to send out tens of thousands of of warriors um, to the Holy Land when the problem really was on its doorstep. And, and there was a pagan problem as well, at least to start with. The Scandinavians largely converted to Christianity from the 850s onwards, but still, obviously, um, e even though they were Christians, ah, still fought amongst the Christian kingdoms. The Pope Urban II um, held the Council of Pienza in March 1095. This was where he undoubtedly started to do the finite planning of the First Crusade. Um, he conducted big tours of France that lasted approximately a year, although he did avoid some key areas of France at that time, most notably because uh, he was going to excommunicate the French king because the French king was having um, very public affairs with his mistress and this was against Christianity. It count, culminates with the Council of Clermont. Council of Clermont was, a, was an enormous affair. Um, I suppose you could compare this with some of the sort of, um, you know, it's like addressing something like Wembley Stadium. There would have been many thousands of people there. Uh, Christ, clergy from all around the world. Uh, all around. There would have been clergy from all around the Christian world. We know that there were 13 archbishops. 82 bishops. Many, many abbots. As well as huge numbers of Norman aristocracy from modern-day Italy, modern-day Spain, modern-day Germany, modern-day France, modern-day England, modern-day Scotland and, and modern-day Wales. Interestingly, um, the Pope had met with Raymond IV, Count of Toulouse, 
uh, with plans for him to lead significant elements of the crusade. His predecessor was Pope Gregory VII. Pope Gregory had planned on leading a crusade and what he envisaged was 50,000 crusaders. Um, that would have been a, most of the Norman knights. And I suppose it's interesting because this is where the church, um, the Roman Catholic Church, really kicked off its very strange and dysfunctional relationship with the Normans. Um, and you see this often in, in church text, religious texts. Um, you see it in historical documents where clergy refer to them as the bloody Normans. Um, the church uses the Norman knights to achieve religious purposes, but at the same time obviously struggles with how the... Um, how the Norman Knights go about doing that. Um, conflict is conflict, and military conflict is bloody, it's personal, it's very in your face, uh, it, it's, um, it's very graphic, uh, and it's very violent, extraordinarily violent. Um, I've never been to war myself, I don't profess to. However, I've been involved in the rehabilitation of quite a few soldiers friends of mine and um, I can tell you that that you know weapons don't really care about color creed race or whatever they don't care about your religion they care about your skill and um, they care about you know uh, can you use them properly or not so the Pope's plan was very much about retaking Christian lands um, now let's be very clear about this this was not about a religious war between Christians and Muslims. This was about retaking Christian lands. There is a massive difference. I understand there's a massive amount of emotional response when it comes to crusades, and people have very polarizing attitudes to it. Please leave any comments you, you like below. I'm interested in your thoughts on the Pope's plan, but please leave it on topic, on point, polite and courteous. Please stay away from modern politics, and please stay away from religious hate speech. I do want to say, however, that um, the, the Pope clearly, as I say, uh, his ambition was to help the Eastern Orthodox Church. Now, um, we've talked about this a little bit already, but the Eastern Orthodox Church had a massive disagreement um, called the Great Schism with the Roman Catholic Church, and, and these seem very trivial issues today with the they used baked unleavened bread or not, whether they used, um, you know, how they conducted Holy Supper and, and some of these things, um, they seem such trivial issues today, but they were obviously very big and passionate issues at the time, and these church, two churches, the two branches of Christianity truly split apart. Um, but it, it was an opportunity, I think, for the, the Pope to unite Christianity. This was, I think, his biggest aim. Unite Christianity under a single cause. Um, unite Christianity under the idea of um, a, a single enemy, a single purpose. Let's go and try and recover some of these holy lands. Let's push. Let's see how far we can get with a, with a crusade. This is going to be an armed pilgrimage to the Holy Land uh, and to retake some of these Christian lands. Now, the Muslims had desecrated many of these sacred Christian sites. Now, I understand that Christians have, have done the same kind of thing to, to many Muslim sites since then um, and probably before too. But this was a very, very emotional um, situation the Christians were clearly under attack and um, the Pope I think feared for Christianity in Europe so he needed in his eyes to push the Muslims back and to prevent them really getting into Europe. The Muslims had raided modern-day France, they had raided um, modern-day Italy, they had raided uh, well into the Byzantine Empire. The Byzantines had lost about two-thirds of their kingdom um, and, and 
this was this was getting way too close for, for comfort for anybody in Europe. So there we go. The, the Pope's plan very much about retaking Christian lands, about assisting Christian brethren, uh, about trying to unite the Christian church. Clearly, if you look at the Pope's speeches and sermons around this, you will see there's nothing whatsoever about um, trying to take over or absorb the um, Eastern Orthodox Church. This is about recognising and respecting the Christian Orthodox Church and the Muslims too. Um, that is very important to say. Alrighty, guys, I really hope you found today's uh, video uh, useful. Please like, subscribe and share. I'll catch you in my next video.